Hello there ladies, gentlemen, and deceased. My name is Emily Sophia and I will be breaking down for you, the lovely viewer, the latest and greatest of The Walking Dead. So I apologize, my, I have to kind of keep my voice low. I got people in the whereabouts that are trying to cop a snooze. So I'm doing my best to be a reasonable human being. And that being said, spoiler alert, as we go forward in this episode, I will be bearing all about what we just witnessed. So. Let us dive into this mad business together and let me first say that this episode is a beautiful tribute to all of the things that the writers are doing right this season, okay? You know, for once, for once in a lifetime, we've got, you know, the writers doing the right thing, you know? Because I, I love that this episode was very narrow in its focus in terms of its exclusive look at the governor picking up where we left off towards the end of season three with, you know, the little hoedown throwdown that happened on the roadside with a certain Woodbury folks who did not exactly anticipate what their governor was going to bust out upon them, which was a certain uh, wrath that rendered his cronies a little bit eager to skedaddle as soon as the big man was napping, okay? Um, and we just had some truly incredible montages to open up the episode. Um, first and foremost, you know, as we see him and Martinez and the guys, you know, they were zipping off into the forest. And I think, you know, I think it's safe to say that you're not exactly want to hang out and babysit the, e the emo governor who is, you know, sitting by the fireside catching the rays, zombie woman comes up, and he does not flinch in the slightest, you know? I mean, that is probably slight cause for alarm, the fact that his impulses are not working as they should. So while, you know, at times where he should be reacting, he isn't, maybe at other times where he shouldn't be, he might. And there's just a lot of, a lot that's up in the air for his boys to figure out. And ultimately they decide that skedaddling and, you know, trying their hand against nature is going to be the best way to go. And I can't exactly blame those guys, okay? So we see that the governor is on his own and he's kind of pulling a little bit of Adele, you know, channeling that inner urge to, well, he would set fire to the rain, but being, you know, the topography, geography, the weather, events, things, climate, being what it is, he doesn't exactly have that to set fire to, so it's time to take his wrath to Woodbury. And, you know, I think that that's very symbolic in the sense that he is setting to fire that all that he was, all that he attempted with Woodbury, you know, as this being the focal point for, you know, civilization coming back around in his way, too. Um, so, and we see, of course, that he is quite thoroughly participating in No Shave November with, you know, he's, he's really got some true finesse when it comes to the art of uh, not razoring the face, I must say. I, <laughs> I had to think of, you know, made me think of Wolverine in the latest Wolverine movie where we kind of pick up at the beginning of that film with where Wolverine's at. So, you know, we find the governor is in a similar place, he's wandering, and, you know, you can... <laughs> I mean, is it, is it safe to say that a, a man with such a scraggle-tastic beard as that is, you know, can be viewed as a man without purpose? Do you think... I think that the two in... They're, they're going hand-in-hand hand together in this scenario, and um, the episode was really... It was really fraught with tension for me because I was just expecting, you know, I was expecting that at any moment. You could just whip around, I mean, like, rip the scraggle beard off and just fly into the action, which we know he is capable of. So <laughs> I had this constant, you know, every lull and every just drooping, dragging motion I just, I felt could be a cover for something. But what we ultimately find is that the guy is just freaking traumatized as all get out. He's catatonic. He can't respond. He has nothing to give. He won't ingest anything. I mean, heck, when he's just kind of making his way downtown, you know, Walker comes waltzing up and he just freaking dodges the guy. <laughs> and luckily for him, I mean, the, you know, Walker's will trip and 
he just kind of gets to go on his merry way. He's got that advantage, but I mean, it's like... It's nothing but, but muscle memory, you know, after, and we do see that there is a true emotional repercussion for him after everything that transpired with, you know, killing all his own people and all the failures along the way. I mean, so we've got the full-fledged emo governor, and uh, I, just, I just think it's so interesting how we kind of had that musical montage, and we're really um, enabled as the viewers to connect with this man who at times has a has come across to us as truly grotesque in terms of the wickedness that you know that he's capable of and that he's he's willing to do um is, is so the episode just really plays into the multi-dimensional side of his personality and that's what makes for the most delicious and delectable villain i mean truly those are the things that get me going as a viewer and so it was just it was really satisfying to be able to see that play out on the screen with him and to see just this episode that revolves around his sort of process of starting over even though we find him at the beginning at you know what's safe to say as wit's end um and it, it makes you wonder like is there any it makes us ask all the right questions, you know, is there any sense of redemption by the time he shows up at the prison, you know, in what state is he going to be? Will he have lost everything that he ultimately gains in this episode? Well, you know, it's impossible to say, being that, you know, the brief little um, teaser that we got for the next episode and what we kind of witnessed at the end of this one is that, um, you know, after the pit frenzy and the, you know, moral combat finishing bonanza that occurred down there, we look see up and we see that Martinez and his guy are back in the business. So the question is, you know, are they all going to kind of bond together? And and I'm just curious to see how much further this backstory goes. Because, I mean, when we pick up the, um, this new season, uh, we see that everybody at the prison is pretty well settled. So... It'll be interesting to see just how much of his past is covered and, and how much longer uh, we'll go with just having the governor in the scope. Because, I mean, it, it wouldn't have made sense to bring in the rest of the prison at this point because we're going to work our way backwards and then kind of return to the context of that scene where we see um, Mr. Governor taking a little peek -see on the... Uh, certain regime he's tried to take out a pretty time or two so you know I'm, I'm really excited and I think that the tension that was built up here was awesome and just the emotional intrigue and I was really freaked out in the episode too because um oh it was uh Lily Lily was the freaking um Maggie Green clone okay that was that was really uncanny to me the similarity there and um I forget the other girl's name it's it's totally slipping past my radar right now um, but at any rate so you know he he encounters this family at a point in time where he's got nothing left to give to the world except you know a little bit of scruffily on his face parts you know other than that his his legacy is is all in ashes and he's just kind of biding his time you know and <laughs> really like that the picture of himself and his family sort of seems to be like the hourglass for him you know we see him constantly returning to that image at first you know it's kind of looking with a loving fondness and he folds the crease over his head and then um, we just sort of see his his movement and how um, after after what happens with the little girl you know where he has to um, to kill I forget if it's the father grandfather figure um, whomever he was, you know, so <laughs> with, with such, you know, in such vivid colors and how uh, he, he, he feels that, you know, all the significance that he's found in life again, he's sort of lost it and burns the picture, you know, and that's sort of, it's almost symbolic of his state until he's, you know, given the opportunity, or shall I say, the opportunity is thrust upon him to sort of kind of have a family again-ish. And it makes us nervous to see a man like the governor so obligated because, I mean, little does Lily know exactly what she's dealing with. Uh, she sees a man who's finally starting to stand up on his own two feet. 
and uh, and she sees a means of redemption from you know redemption from what he just did in a sense I mean it had to be done but it's it's redemption from the place that they've all been in this is the commencement of the fresh start for the governor but what's awesome is that we can't yet tell where that's gonna go I mean we have to assume that he's gonna lose something along the way I mean there's a certain you know it's kind of easy to romanticize the idea of just being the lone governor lurking on the uh, periphery of the prison and just kind of seeing um, how that would transpire and to see him entering this kind of whole new madness but I mean there's just really no way of knowing but it was such a beautiful episode and to see his um, relationship kindled with this little girl who is basically his lost daughter incarnate and you know every suggestion and you know conversation about daughters that occurred up until the point where he got to interact with this girl I was just like you are pushing the big red button and something tells me that <laughs> enough enough pokes is going to result in something of nuclear proportions I mean it is the governor to which we are referring. Little do they know, we've just got our buddy Brian here, Mr. Beardley, the pirate. <laughs> that part made me really happy when he was sharing the story with the little girl. Because I, I was just saying that when he uh, went in and got the oxygen tanks, um, <laughs> when he came back, I think I referred to him as something along the lines of the scraggly emo pirate Santa. Something to that effect. I mean, doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, but I think it pretty much covers his resume fairly well. I mean, at least the part that he wants to put forward for the job of being Mr. Mr. Do-it-all awesomeness, you know, kind of get his place. Yeah, but to see his relationship with his family and to sort of see how he is strategizing, you know, his fresh beginning, how he is emoting and connecting to the world around him, it's just... You know, it continues to make him a very rich character, and, you know, the the little triumphs and tragedies along the way. I mean, there's, okay, so there was a movie that the whole governor-little girl dynamic reminded me so strongly of, but I just can't place my finger on it, so you guys have to let me know what this is exactly. But, you know, basically the situation where this sort of outcast or villain connects with the small innocent child, everything is going great, and then things go downhill, oops, he's actually kind of a scary dude after all, there's the separation. I mean, I feel like that's from something in particular, so if you can think of, you know, what I'm thinking of, then you'll have to let me know, because I was so strongly reminded of that, and that was really conjured up through me, uh, for me, uh, time and time again. And then, of course, it also reminds me of uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead game, which I hope and pray you guys have all played, and if not, then you better get your booties up on that, because Game of the Year Edition is coming out. And season two of the game should also be released in hopefully the upcoming months. They were originally saying this month and, and now it's coming soon. It scares me, but Lee and Clementine, for those of you who have played, that is all I need to say. And that's kind of what it made me think of, but in a sense I have, you know, I have a feeling that this is going to be tragic in the reverse. I don't know. I, I don't really know, but I just... I don't, I mean, it's possible that the governor could arrive at the prison with his crew, you know, and sort of use his sort of new family as a means of gaining access to the prison and everyone kind of has to sort of, you know, tenuously walk around this figure. And of course, the whole element of Martinez and, and the other guy coming back into the picture, or I, I think it was the two of them, the, the two former henchmen, I'm, I'm space cadetting right now. But having him back in the picture with his family who knows so little, I mean, that's going to create some tension as well. So we have no idea if he's going to be, you know, flanked in lovely ladies or, you know, who exactly is going to be with him other than his own brain. We'll see. We'll see how everything transpires. But again, I feel like the drama and the tension was sustained really well through this episode. We got some great zombie action. We got, uh, we got Tub Walker, we got, um, we got the walkers on walkers in the nursing home. 
And that was, that was a really interesting scene as well because up until that point we just kind of seen the governor sort of, you know, dragging himself around and he's going into a combat area. So there was a sense that like, you know, he could just let himself slip and that'd be in the end of it. But we know that he's capable of so much more than that. And um, so he, he does a little bit of bowling for walkers, but unfortunately the pins are a little bit hungry and it doesn't exactly work in his favor. Not really so much a strike or a spare. So he takes off there and and again, the whole scene uh, with, with the pit and just the very, very visceral action that we got there. You know, we, we see that the governor is back in full. I mean, he must be eating his mac and cheese or whatever the crap, you know, he was getting in the beginning. He must be eating that now, clearly. No more of that dump out the window business. I mean, clearly a man so wasteful is not worthy of Spaghetti Tuesday. And especially not on Wednesdays. Herschel would not be standing for that. But yeah, at any rate, so we have this relationship developing between... Um, between Lily and the governor. Again, it is freaking me the crap out just how much she looks like Maggie. It just sort of seems like this alternate universe where whoops, Maggie is totally fallen for sketch-tastic dude. But, you know, it, it's, it's gonna be really interesting to see how that plays out and if that can be sustained or if he's just being set up to lose everything all over again because that that kind of puts me in an uncomfortable area because, you know, seeing seeing a guy such as that lose everything all over again and we see where he was last season to be put through all of that a second round, I can't imagine that it's gonna be a picnic of any sort. Um, yeah, so I mean, by all means, share with me your theories and thoughts as far as what have we got coming? I don't know, but our boy Morrissey is back in the business. <laughs> Speaking of Morrissey, I I definitely felt towards the beginning that um, all the scenes, the montage with the governor could well have been suited to some, some emo Morrissey song, but <laughs> It's good to see him, you know, he's coming back. We've got this really tight, narrow focus on his past and him as a character, and it's exciting to see someone really fleshed out like this, someone who's not a part of the immediate group and who could, in fact, pose a very incredible threat to them. So we'll have to see what exactly transpires, but thank you guys so much for listening to my thoughts and ramblings. I was so excited for the governor's delicious return, and it was as satisfying as I'd hoped. And, you know, again, they're kind of, they're sort of pulling out the storyline so that the, the tension is, it's going to be very, uh, very much just everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how it all goes. And, you know, the question is, where is Carol going to factor into this? I don't think we're going to see that for a while if we continue to focus explicitly on the governor, but I'm excited to see where this goes, you know, the the beard is out, the gov is back, and, you know, continuing on in all of his, his piratey glory, so I hope you guys take care, stick around for my review next week, and um, I will do my best to maybe get some other videos up on the channel, gotta get the whole Google Plus shenanigans worked out so I can respond to more comments, but that is also on my radar as well, so... Take care, and we shall, you know, we shall govern her again next time, and um, look forward to seeing how the Emperor is going to get back his uh, new groove. We'll see where exactly that takes him, <laughs> but you guys, be as splendid as you are. I love you all, and I'll be back before you know it. Mwah. Last night I some